All right, in this clip, we're gonna talk about how to use a 35 millimeter camera. All right, a 35 millimeter camera is actually my favorite thing to use. Um, it takes a really nice picture. Um, it's not as complicated as everybody makes it out to be. And definitely you can learn pretty easily and go ahead and start experimenting with it. And that's gonna be really where you learn to be one with the filler five, 35 millimeter camera. Um, first off, you're gonna to have to get some film for your 35 millimeter camera. Um, 24 exposures is obviously the most popular. Um, 36 is very popular also. You're gonna to have to no need to note the film speed of whatever you're buying though. Um, if you're going for lower lighted pictures, you're gonna to wanna to go with a lower film speed. Um, Ilford puts out a 125 film speed, which is really good for low lighting. Um, they usually are only in black and white though. And black and white actually, if you would wanna go with that situation if you don't wanna worry about the temperature of the lights, it's a pretty good thing to start off with. That's why most beginning photo photography classes are done in black and white. Um, if you wanna go higher and higher, we have the 400 is very popular and 800 is very popular and that's mostly used for outdoor um, action sports photography. Um, whenever you load the film, the first thing you want to do, you want to make sure that it hitches and it's loaded correctly inside because otherwise you're going to waste all those pictures. And if you open the canister at any time, that film is going to be exposed and you're going to lose all those pictures and that's just a waste of your time. Um, after you make sure that you have loaded the film correctly, you're going to want to notice um, somewhere on your camera you should be able to adjust the ISO and you're going to want to have to match that to the film speed of your camera to make sure that your light meter is working correctly on all points in time so you can get a really correct reading and know how to light your photo your photograph. <laughs> um, then actually after you are all set up with that, you can, you're ready to go out and take pictures. Um, what you're gonna wanna do is um, point at whatever your subject is. You should, uh, if you're using an SLR, you should be able to focus with, um, with the front here. On an old SLR, you probably are going to have to do this yourself, but on a lot of new like digital SLRs, it can do it for you if you don't want to do it yourself. And just get as much as you can. A clear picture would be great. What you're supposed to do is go all the way fuzzy and kind of go back and get sharper and sharper and sharper so you can see the adjustment. Once you're focused in there, you're going to take a look at your light meter. Um, depending on the camera, it could be anywhere, but it's going to give you a suggested f-stop. Um, you should be able to look at your camera then and on different places. In a digital SLR, it's obviously going to be, you're going to tell the f-stop by your digital display. Whereas on a SLR that's film, the f-stop's usually right around the rim of the camera. You're going to want to go ahead and line up the f-stop with whatever it is that the f-stop is said in the light meter. And that way the lighting should be just right for you. And before you do the f-stop, you should actually start um, setting up what um, the shutter speed. The shutter speed is actually how fast um, the shutter clicks. If you're doing um, action photography, for example, you're good if you do a slow shutter speed, then the, the camera lens is gonna be open for a longer period of time. So you're gonna get blurs. So if you have someone you're running across the screen, you're gonna have the blur of them going from one end to the other end of the picture. If you do a really fast shutter speed, then you're gonna have just clicked in the middle and you'll have them in full fr frozen fr frame. <laughs> And with that stuff, the, um, the light meter will actually take in tune whatever it is that your shutter speed is and adjust your f-stop for it. So as long as you go ahead and match your f-stop, you should have a nice looking picture. And as you get more advanced with it, you can kind of start adjusting your f-stops to what you really want to do.